Hey, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of Whiskey Neat, spirited conversations with interesting people. I am your host, Christopher Hart. Today was a special day. Today was our first official out-of-studio recording. We got all of our equipment up and running and all of the people talking in the background. I hope you can't hear any of that. Um, and what a special occasion to do it because we did it with Brent Elliott. Brent Elliott, the master distiller at Four Roses, is here in Houston launching a brand new product, as many people have already seen, the Four Roses Small Batch Select. 104 proof, non-chill filtered, beast of a Four Roses product that is now their fourth addition to their main core lineup. Brent's in town, uh, our friend Nick Talamantes, who's already been on the show. What a perfect opportunity to try to like branch outside of the studio to sit and talk and and so yeah it's been fun um we are at the and that's them leaving now you guys can't see it off camera but that's Bryn elliott the head of sales and the ceo of the company mark i forget mark's last name but uh yeah, so they're, they're in town, then they're going to Austin, uh, which means, just so you know, just between us, for those of you in Texas, I don't really have a rivalry with Dallas. I really don't. I really don't. But it's also fun to make fun of the rivalry of Dallas. So just so you know, for all of you Dallas listeners, I love you personally. I really do. I, I'm a lover. I, I, uh, I love everybody. I have no issues with anybody. But with that being said, for Roses... Uh, launched this new product specifically in Houston and Austin only. <laughs> no, not you, Dallas. Houston and Austin. I couldn't help but think that that was absolutely hilarious. <laughs> um, that being said, I forgot my whole point. My point is this Dallas sucks. Uh, this week's show, as always, is sponsored by Terlato Distel Artisan Spirits, leader in premium artisan products like Bunahaben, Deanston, Lecheg, Tobermory, Baines, Black Bottle, and Scottish Leader. You can pick up the entire line at your local liquor store, or if you are a retailer, reach out to your United Wine and Spirits rep. Just to be clear, before that pitch, I said Dallas sucks. I'm more particularly talking to our friend Peter at the Dallas Bourbon Society. You suck. With all the love in my heart, I love you. Uh, that being said... Nick's here, uh, Bryn Elliott's here. We're at the, uh, the Ivy, right? I wanted to make sure I mentioned this place. So this whole product launch in Houston was actually done with Boss Cat Kitchen, uh, who if you've never been to Boss Cat, you've got to get over to Boss Cat. They have this incredible whiskey room and a fantastic poutine that'll knock your socks off. And we shot the episode here at the Lofts at Ivy, which I think is the, the technical term, the, the loft bar at the Ivy, which is just across the street from uh, Boss Cat Kitchen. So this was our first go at a public shooting. I have many, many ideas of things to come, of, of fun stuff to come off-site. And uh, I really just want to thank everybody for supporting the show. I want to thank Trilato and Distel. I want to thank Edr Edrington, McAllen, past sponsors, uh, Brown Foreman. This show has been going for 64 episodes, I think. And it has been uh, solely because of the support from the brands and, of course, the people watching. So do me a favor. If you're a fan of the show and if you've enjoyed any of the episodes, please go rate and review the show on iTunes. Give it a five-star rating. More importantly, give it actual text feedback. Shoot me some feedback about the show. We are constantly evolving on how to approach the show. I do want to take a moment to specifically apologize for last week's episode the TABC episode. If you've noticed, I've not shared much of it on social media. I'm a little bit stressed and ashamed of the episode. We had talked to the publicist or the marketing guy from the TABC before the show started and kind of found out that a lot of what we wanted to talk about, we couldn't talk about. So the show got nerfed incredibly. We, uh, General Nettles was an incredible guest. He was very nice, very sweet. And, um, just a down-to-earth guy, but we were kind of limited on what we could talk about, and it kind of stripped the show from all of its content early on, and it was a real struggle for me. It was a real test of my ability to host, which is not much to say to, to begin with. So um, I hope it was our easily most edited, heavily edited episode. 
uh, and it really put my producer Jack through through trials and tribulations to make sure it was a somewhat watchable episode. So I apologize. With that being said, I think I've ranted enough. Rate and review the show, and that's it. All right. Uh, oh, um, whiskeymerch.com. You can get all of our shirts for the show, for both the Houston Whiskey Social, our Whiskey Festival, as well as the show Whiskey Neat, ESP, and all of our merch there. Whiskey merch. That's whiskey with an E, merch.com. And, uh, yeah, I think that covers all of our bases. Cheers. Thanks for coming on the show, man. Hey, good to be here. You're actually in the in normally the the cold chair, so that's normally the, the hot shot sits in this chair, oh, okay. uh, the right the right hand side. So Chinese fire drill. It? Yeah, no, I'm just okay. kidding. It's not a big deal. Thanks so much <laughs> for coming on, man. Well, thanks for having us. Uh, you have made quite the wave uh, name, and and I'm sorry. Let's try that again. You made quite the name for yourself in this massive wave of four roses the last five years. Oh, I hit the table. Sorry, guys. This is our first on location official shoot so we're we're working through a few bugs can you but, get the uh, pool in the background here can you see that no i can yeah probably not uh you guys are killing it man yeah i think we're we're doing very well i mean it's, it's an exciting time for us for rose and nick you started with the brand about a year ago you've already been on the show once right once twice uh between you Finally and matthew repeat yeah <laughs> <laughs> between you and matthew walt you guys look you know a little similar at first glance so um, but yeah, you've been on the show before, and I'm excited to talk about the launch. So, small batch select. Let's jump into it. But first, let's start with a pour of something. You can't okay. you can't talk about four roses and not drink this beautiful liquid. <laughs> I'll start with you guys. Thank you. Quite a host. Thank you. I go a little lighter. I just realized how heavy I poured that. I'm driving him around. <laughs> <laughs> so, talk to me about it. Okay, uh, if you're familiar with, and I assume you are, with our, our history and our lineup, you know, we've always had the Four Roses bourbon. We, uh, 2004, we came out with a single barrel, then 2006, the Four Roses small batch. So it's been a while since we've actually added something to our permanent lineup. So we're pretty excited about this. This is uh, Small Batch Select. We released it, um, well, just a few weeks ago, we released it in five different markets here in the U.S., now, as I mentioned, this is a permanent addition to our, our lineup. So right now, you can't get it everywhere. The goal within the next few years is to be able to get it anywhere in the United States. Well, well the problem right now is you guys, if I'm not mistaken, is you, you were so excited about it, you didn't, you didn't wait until you're ready at right. all. That's right. We yeah. couldn't wait for the inventory. We had the product. We had a healthy inventory, not enough to go nationwide, but we wanted to go ahead and release it. Sure. Can, can we talk about how big, uh, what, what kind of release are we talking about in terms yeah, of cases? We're, um, case wise, that's um, like, it's more about the markets. Let's talk about how many sure, markets we're going sure. into. <laughs> Actually, off the top of my head, I couldn't even yeah. couldn't quote it right now. But uh, we're doing, of course, we're here in Texas. So the Houston market, Austin. Suck at Dallas. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Then uh, those were that was the official statement from no that Fort was Moses. yeah yeah it was yeah. suck at Dallas yeah. got it I told them in the state office like yeah y'all can't have any go Texans we're very uh, particular about that city in the state in gotcha. this part of part of the state I guess uh, yeah I'm not I'll get the backstory on that from Nick later I guess yeah. sure get the so whole, sports sports teams okay uh, it's that simple that, yep. it's that simple. that's okay. all that matters yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys rolled out at Houston and Austin uh huh then uh, Georgia sure really heavy on Atlanta. Uh, Kentucky, of course, California, and New York. <clears throat> so five big markets for us, but nonetheless, it's just five markets. So we're obviously not nationwide yet, but with this product, but it will be. So while we talk about, and, and feel free to uh, you know, um, choose not to elaborate here, but when we talk about rolling out these markets early, we know that it's going to be a permanent line, uh, part of your line. Uh-huh nationwide eventually i'm tapping the table sorry uh but in the meantime or do we have anything to worry about as far because i know that in houston four roses has been kind of blowing it out of the water that uh-huh. it's hard to keep it on the shelf right now so are we seeing a a full release of what you have or is it going to be incrementally release so that there's never houston's never going to run dry yeah that's the idea that's why we're working up instead of hitting a number that might be unsustainable so we're starting out with five markets, and then we plan to build from there. 
because if you know about our other products, all three of our products have been on allocation within the last three to five years. Sure. We're coming out of that now, and you can kind of see that. Obviously, we've got some excess liquid that we can offer the consumer something new with, but we've learned from that situation with allocation, and that's why we're easing into this and not going nationwide just to realize two months later that we've overshot and then we have to allocate. Absolutely. And I was telling you before, earlier, we, we had lunch earlier, uh, we were talking about hitting those green lights that you guys kind of hit, all, you checked all the right boxes to get the nerds excited. I mean, non-chill filtered, uh, 104 proof. I mean, what? I mean, you guys could, couldn't could have made better decisions with it. Well, I think we were making this for me because I'm a bourbon nerd. You know, <laughs> sure. it's what do I want on my shelf that I can't get every day. Now the lab's a different story. I can get anything I want from Four Roses, <laughs> but humble brag. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the lab. My home's a different scenario. Sure, there, yeah, I've got some private selections. Of course, I've got um, a lot of the limited releases we've done, but I don't have consistently something that is like this. Sure, a, a higher proof, non-chill filter. Um, with a f- small batch select, it just hits that mark for me, and I think it hits the mark for a lot of consumers. Absolutely, uh, I'm a fan. Yeah, the green oh. lights, as you say. Yeah, yeah. Hit, yeah. Hit, I, I'm, I'm trying. I've been trying for. We were doing the show, 64 episodes. I've been trying to find another, the opposite of red flags, and all I can come up with is green lights. It's driving me nuts. I think it's a good one. But, but I think yeah. you're, I think you're hitting, you're checking all the right boxes, and I see that you like to mix Coke with your, your whiskey there. <laughs> <laughs> It's funny, that's about the only thing I won't mix with whiskey. Sure. I like my Coke and I like my whiskey, but, but not together. Not together. I think I might go back to college. Sure. My, my first cocktail, if you can call that a cocktail. Oh, Jack and Coke? <laughs> yeah. What, was, um, what do you got in front of you there? Mm. <laughs> I saw you had a little... This is nosy. Uh, <laughs> Nick, he must like you because Friday he called me up and he said, let's bring something special for Chris. So uh, went over to the lab. I pulled out a few different samples here. One, I don't know if you've ever tried our white dog or a distillate. I don't think. I'm trying to remember our trip through the distillery. There's not a, a we don't taste it off the still, do we? No. Yeah, I don't think so. And then, so I have one particular recipe, both at the right off the still stage and then another sample at 10 years of age. And then I have just something Tapping that, that I, table. some other sample <laughs> that I pulled off that I'll tell you more about when we get sure. to. Sure. So, so uh, let's start with the white dog. Okay. I, I will tell you, there's a few, and, and I know Michael can, he doesn't watch this, but he, he's, I've told him before, I think there's an actual, there's some white dog out there. I would drink, I would oh, buy, yeah, it, I'd buy it as a product. Yeah, 100%. yeah. yeah. And one, yeah. Of the, one of my favorites is Maker's Mark. They have a real biscuity, yeasty quality to their, their white dog. I think it's fantastic. And uh-huh. there are a few distilleries uh, in Kentucky that I think should be putting out more white dog. I mean, I know the, the goal you know, uh, is whiskey, but uh, but you know, I'm excited to try some OBSO distillate. Me too. I've actually never tried that one. Even when really? we're in the lab, I, all I tried was OE and OBSV. Okay. Uh, so I'm excited to try this. This is probably my favorite to show, and probably my favorite also because it's so fruity, so estery. It it actually, oh, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. It reminds me. Have you ever had um, Japanese shochu? Uh, no. It's, um, it's a spirit. It's made from, well, they make it from all sorts of all different kinds of stuff, yeah. grains. But uh, the uh, barley shochu, this reminds me of that a lot. It has a lot of fruity notes. Um, well, I'll let you judge. <laughs> but this is a good time to talk about the 10 recipes because sure. this, all, this fits into kind of what we do. We have the two mash bills, the B mash bill, which is thir- oh, please, 35% rye, um, 60% corn, 5% malted barley. And then the lower rye mash bills, 20% rye, 5% malted barley, and 75% corn. Did I say that wrong? Right here? Yeah. Right here? Oh, yeah. 65% corn, 30%. 65. <laughs> Slow the driver this, up. This, um, all sorts. Okay, so, so you have the two mash bills. Sure. High rye, low rye, and then you have the five different yeast strains. So with that combination, you have 10 different recipes. And... This is the high rye mash bill, 35% rye with the O yeast. So you're going to get a lot of rye and you're going to get a lot of fruit. Is this a clean cup? Ooh, it's got white dye. At, 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 yeah, at 120 proof, it's yeah. clean now. Is that what that is? Actually, it's 140. That's, it, mis- it's, yeah, it's 140. Mislabeled? Don't tell Wade. Oh, so that's off the still? That that's off, off the still. still. Uh-huh. Yeah. Wow. So th- this is actually something uh, we've not talked about on the show that I'm pretty f- familiar with. I, I actually called and spoke to... 
uh, I called Four Roses Distillery one day because we were having an online discussion, and this was probably two years ago, and a woman answered, and she just so happened to be, she said she was your assistant distiller. I, I don't remember. This was like two years ago, I mean, but actually, I, I bet this was actually yeah. yeah. The question she came up. Me in the lab. Yeah. Right. She, yeah. The question came up is why you guys don't. We you'll never see a 140 proof off the out of the barrel from you guys any uh -huh. you want to provide some insight on that yeah we go into every barrel at 120 and with our single story rick warehouses we don't get much beyond about 135 in the extreme cases sure because even in our warehouses that are by design consistent single story you don't have much temperature variation from the bottom to the top but even in ours if you go out 15 20 years you will see a big difference in the proof from the top to the bottom. Sure. That's just six barrel difference. But barrels at the bottom, they could end up being low 90s uh, at the top, 130 to 135. Mm -hmm. Those are the extreme cases. So that's as high as you're ever going to see in one of our warehouses. Yeah, I, I, there's a guy locally, Paul Hansen, who mentioned that he's never been a huge fan of the uh, first tier picks because they uh -huh. didn't see that much of a fluctuation in development. It's very okay. kind of not one note but it's very consistent to the point that he's you know a lot of these barrel picks people are excited about variation uh -huh. give me something off profile in fact the barrel we did in december specifically we were yeah. looking uh it was we i loved it so much because it was so bizarre and it was like a tobacco bomb mm -hmm. and no one else initially worked, osq right uh osq i think so yeah yeah, yeah. and p people we're looking, you know, normally you narrow down your barrel pick, you kind of uh -huh. weed out the ones you definitely don't like. <clears throat> and we were bounced between these two for a while, not considering that we had already ruled out mine, and then we ended up saying, screw it, let's go for the wild card, and took the, the tobacco bomb. Yeah, that's so, what's cool about picks, is you can you can do that. You have that opportunity to, to showcase something different, or, yeah, it's pretty pretty off profile. <laughs> yeah, I, I pref you pre in this age, there's always the hunt for the, the different. Right, and yeah. I, I think that's you know what makes your entire recipe line fun is it's everyone's different, right? Yeah, and there's variance between each recipe. This is fantastic, by the way. It's 140 proof uh -huh. off the still. That's what you. Mm -hmm. can. This is actually a composite sample, so every day when a sample comes off the still, we set it up depending on the recipe with the standard of that same recipe. The standards are kind of like the ideal target. So this is a composite sample of I don't have it on here, but it's probably four or five different batches of white from dog. the last year that were really good runs, really good examples of that recipe that we married together to make that composite sample. And, and we actually briefly talked about this uh, when, when you first got here. You specifically, um, y'all mentioned during your promoting that this is the fourth rose uh -huh. uh, of, the, of the main core line. And, I, and I, I'll ask you again, do you think that that might hinder you at all? in terms of you guys want to come out with a rye or even release a white dog as a regular available item? So fifth rows wouldn't work. Well, I mean... <laughs> it loses its, it sure. loses its uh, charm there, doesn't it? Um, I think it handcuffs you a little bit. It but, does. But initially, not, not permanently. Um, you know, now I've got something else to worry about. <laughs> <laughs> not for me. I'm not... Um, you know, this... No one watches this anyway. Even if we... It's been 12 years since we released anything new, so obviously we're not just throwing things out to just see what sticks. Sure. Yeah. So I'm not saying it's going to be 12 years before the next thing happens, but let's say we decide to do a rye in the next year. It's still going to be another five or at least five years, if not longer, before it would hit the market. So is yeah. that you saying that you guys are not currently aging rye? We are currently are not, no. Oh. That is me saying that. Yeah. Wow. Uh-huh. You heard it here first. I kind of was kind of hoping he'd backdoor himself into admitting it. No. Because, <laughs> I mean, listen, right? Rye is, is also going through this a bit of a resurgence it is, in yeah. popularity. And with Four Roses being this just a fanatic following, I mean, fanatic following, there's. there's and I, rye we, heavy. It, yeah, anyway. yeah, yeah, yeah. There's whole yeah. Instagram accounts dedicated to you guys that isn't run by you guys. So <laughs> I, I, I think a rye would be a massive hit. And that was my first thought when I saw that you guys kind of. Pro produce this great product, a great uh -huh. addition of the core line, and advertise it as the fourth rose, but not, you know, what is I it? I do like that, the fourth rose. Yeah? What, what would uh, you? What, what would be the next thing called? The thorns? The stem? The stem. Like, <laughs> like I said, we'll have some time to think about that. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> it's so high proof, uh -huh. and it's the alcohol really comes through, but there's a, a, a ton of flavor in that. 
And uh, I'm, I'm telling you, when I sit down with people and I drink White Dog, I always think I could do this around a campfire or on a hunting lease. Just like it's it's totally drinkable by itself, and it kind of blows my mind when people aren't fans of White Dog. Like just more more refined moonshine, essentially. Sure. Know, kind of. Not to throw that word around. But I know. Wait, <clears> feels like that word. Wait, yeah. get angry. Well, he doesn't listen to podcasts, so we're okay. Yeah, it is good. It's got a, a very floral brightness to it, but also. I, I always get that biscuit, that, that yeasty quality that you get from... Uh, uh, and I love it. That's what I like about White Dog, too. That's what I love about being at distilleries. It's my favorite part about visiting any distillery. Smell that. Is the smell. <laughs> oh, the smell, Walk, yeah. It smells like yeah. a bakery. Like it's, a bakery it's, is a good word for yeah, it. Yeah, it's yeah. awesome. When you walk through a Rick House, the smells are everything. Like, um, that should be absolutely. the next candle. I know they got candles that, like... Ma- go across like the gambit of every flavor out or smell out there someone needs to capture you know rick house smell because that's that's the best well that's the shampoo and i'll be buying yeah, it. yeah. <laughs> wild turkey's don't got get pulled over <laughs> yeah yeah wild turkey's got a uh uh bourbon candle that uh, i used to <laughs> my wife thinks i'm so stupid for this but i would leave it in my truck on a hot day so, but on the dashboard, it would completely melt. melt. Yeah. But it would release the most incredible smell in my truck. And you could walk up to my truck and smell it. And at, at first, I was like, this is the most genius car freshener idea until my kid knocked it over at, oh. while it was melted. So it just liquid it, wax everywhere. It was hardened up all over the road. Yeah. It was, it was an absolute nightmare. But, but my truck smelled really good for a while. Yeah. <laughs> so, what do we have next? Okay. Um, this next one is the same recipe, just aged 10 years. So you kind of learn a few things here. You can see the difference in the recipes, and you can see what 10 years in a barrel will do. Sure. What, uh, and I've always, I've always wondered this, and I don't know how it would work. You would think that you'd have the ability to do so, but do you ever, are you allocated a private barrel a year or something that you could just say, I want to do a little Brent Elliott private thing? I mean, it's no, a, no, no. I mean, if you wanted to, it's a good idea. <laughs> I mean, but you drink so much of the stuff already. I would imagine it would be exhausting. But, but if you wanted to say, okay, I've, I've been. How long have you been master still? Four years. Uh, going on four. Yeah. Four years. At five years, I'll take a barrel, guys, if I can have one. Uh, is it Mike? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mark, Mark. <laughs> Mark. 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 Yeah. And be like, can can I have a, a barrel? And then, or, no, you don't get any of that. Because I've tried some, yet, but I haven't thought of it. Yeah, yeah. It was well, empty. I, know, I know the gift shop. It was empty. <laughs> the gift shop usually has Brent Elliott Select. Uh-huh. You know, but I would think you'd squirrel away some of those. Oh, I do, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And when I'm out in the market, when I find a barrel that I know is good, sure. I'll, I'll buy them. Any, any, and squirrel any, them away. any club Facebook names you want to throw out there that have great picks that secondary is going to blow up on? <laughs> um, usually it's by accident. I don't have a lot of free time, so I don't actually actively hunt them out. But if I'm, like, I was at a store. This is about a year ago, back when you couldn't find the O yeast strain at all. It was, sure. It was rare as could be, and I was signing. I think Except it was for like, charity, right? Yeah. And we're starting to get, we're, we have more O's now and some more K's. We're getting back into it for a while there. You couldn't find them. And um, so I was signing bottles for like a Q or some other recipe that was you know, more abundant at the time. And somebody brought up an O, and I was kind of shocked. I was like, where'd you get this? And so I got over there, and so I, the manager was with me. I was like, this guy just said he got this O over there and he went over and was like oh I guess we must place that yeah that's we had a six pack that I guess was left over from you know last year or whatever so I was like well this is I'll take that this is pretty nice actually I I was I just thought everyone that came in I was talking to everybody it was just sort of a slow night you know in in Louisville and uh, this liquor store so the people I was talking to I could gauge you know if they were just like well, what is this I'd like to try it or if they really knew what they were getting and they were there for the recipes and so anyone that was like that I would say hey you know there, there's some O's over there if you want them but I had in the back of my mind if anything was left over I was going to get it and I did I bought one bottle sure and then I think my wife gave it to a co-worker or something but yeah <laughs> so what's so the, things what's like the that. deal with that because you know you, you go to do a pick and uh I don't know if it's ever been the case that all 10 have always been available, but the last few times I've been to Kentucky to do picks, uh-huh. there was like three or four recipes that just weren't available. What, yeah. Is it just because do you guys have a schedule? It would. I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. Okay. It comes off as though you guys produce a lot more of certain recipes and spend very little time on some other recipes. 
it all comes down to it's sort of the same reason that we had to allocate. You just can't foresee what's going to happen five, six, and in the case of the barrel program, eight to 11 years in the future. So when we were producing the batches that are now in the program, we were producing more for Four Roses Bourbon. To a lesser degree, small batch, and to about the same degree, single barrel. So when we were producing X amount of K batches, X amount of V batches, X amount, that was all to meet the forecasted requirements for Four Roses Bourbon, small batch, and single barrel. So let's take the O's and K's, for example, the recipes that go into standard single or standard small batch. Those batches, the like the fruitiest and the spiciest of those batches are pulled aside at six years old to be used in small batch. And the remainder, you still need those to go into the formula for four of bourbon. The remainder go into that that are also very good, but usually the, the fruitiest, especially the sure. O's. The very rich ones are really pronounced. Yeah, yeah, those are pulled aside for the small batch. That's six and seven years old. That those will be used. Small batch, as you know, has been on allocation too, and we're coming out of that now. But that was on allocation, which basically meant that every available drop of those recipes had to go towards small batch to meet that demand, which meant that nothing for the nothing program. nothing got to grow up. Nothing got to be eight, nine, ten, or eleven, twelve years old of some of those recipes. Now, some of them, like the OESK. Yes, um, OBSK, little, not so much. The OESK, because it has a higher proportion in the Four Roses bourbon. So we had more of that on hand. We made more of that because it was used at a higher percentage somewhere else. So those batches that go into Four Roses bourbon that we make more of have more of a chance of, or there's more of that available to sure. set aside for the program. But we've had the program. It's been going just probably about 10 Sw years now. Swimmingly well. Yeah, it's been going great. But about, uh, and we first opened it up, it was all 10 recipes, and we'd mail them to you. You could be sure. anywhere, and we'd <laughs> mail you the recipe and say, you know, get back to us when you can. Which caused you know, a bit of a, a backlog or two, a whatever. Yeah. yeah, it did. Um, so it's a learning process. We had to... Um, well, We've had to refine it and sure. change how we operate it. Do away with the samples, and now you have to come to the distillery. Yeah. Uh, it, uh -huh. just, it expedites, a, it, it cleans things up. Yeah, it make, it's better for everyone. Um, it, it seemed great at first for the retailer for the first you know, year or so, but then it was even tough for them because if you're, for every barrel you sold, you had 10 samples that were out in the market. So that was tying up a lot of inventory. It was limiting what we could do backlogging a lot i think i think mandy said at one point you guys were backlogs like six months yeah in barrels uh -huh. and uh, i remember there were uh there was a specific recipe oeso or you know something that wasn't supposed to be released in 2018 but it was actually picked in 2017 and didn't get bottled until 2018 so there was a lot of confusion over i thought that wasn't available and but it's because oh, yeah. the samples were tied oh, yeah, there was the that, market. that yeah. lag time yeah yep and now you so, guys have are there plans to so in the past two years i don't know how many years but i know for sure at least the last two the 600 barrels were set aside specifically yeah. for the barrel program uh -huh. are there plans to increase that the now that you've kind of cleaned up the logistics a lot of it there will be um and there's more to it than just that if you look at inventory that's one part um the actual bottling capacity that's another and then you know Mandy, that's another. She's just one person. She's doing two picks a day. Sure. Most days she's in there yep. in the morning and the afternoon. So you know, I could say, oh, sure, I, let's let's do 50 more barrels. And then Mandy yeah. would kill me because yeah. Yeah. she doesn't <laughs> yeah, she have would. 25 more days. <laughs> sure. You know, and she really is that busy. So it's we just need to look at all that as a whole. And it won't be done this year, probably not next year. But certainly there's, there's a lot of opportunity to increase what we do it's a matter of figuring out how sure just making it work and right uh -huh. now you've got your hands full with this beautiful beast um <laughs> so talking about what's available can, can i and we can you know, feel free to tell me we'll cut it out oh no but i'm curious about the so i specifically so evans Tabor, mm -hmm. local guy brings me this beautiful <laughs> perfect i knew you're gonna ask about this 100 proof yeah. bottling okay. of the single barrel product and it made me realize, I think sometimes in this hobby, we get so caught up in thinking cast strength is the only way to go, uh -huh. that you forget some of the 100 proof or the lower proof offerings out there that are freaking phenomenal. And uh, I think it was one of Jamie, 
uh, uh, Lincoln Road. I think it was one of his picks. Yeah. But yeah. it was a, it was a hundred proof pick. It was just it was phenomenal. So uh-huh. this year I asked Kent. I said, Hey, we'd like to. And plus, it yields like, you know, 240 bottles versus, uh, I think our first barrel yielded 72 bottles or something. It was, a lot. It was yeah. low. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So <clears throat> okay. in this past year, uh, it was great, 160, but we sold it out in one day, right? So we still have that problem. Uh, Kent said that the 100 proof isn't available in Texas and hasn't been for a few years. Can you elaborate on that? Uh, actually, I think... You can better than me. I'm not sure yeah, so exactly the details. And it's it's like we've discussed before. Uh, well, I know. I, I'm, it's for the audience. I know. That yeah. I, I, I've got a general understanding of the idea, but 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 yeah. So basically, like how we have it skewed out is it runs under the same SK barcode. Yeah. Yeah. So when it's coming into Texas and then out of the distributor, it's running as single barrel. So you know we don't have enough single barrel to go around for Texas as it is really. You know, we've had to keep a tight control on already this year. Sure. Uh, last year we knew in June we would be out. Um, in the fall, yeah. It's just those cases, we start opening those barrels up, we start we lose those cases because that number counts towards that our allocation so for in, a regular single barrel. Internally there's a bit of a, it, a, a, what do you call it in the distributing industry? A, uh, starts with a D, a depletion yeah. of uh, of those SKUs thinking that it's the regular self item single barrel when really it's not, it's the single, the yeah, private cause, barrel. Because essentially, yeah, it was being a double edged sword. So it's not only or is that one less barrel that comes out that we're able to sell, but that's also, I mean, because that's coming out at 180 bottles, correct? Like we're about 30. It's about so, average. Yeah, so about 100. That seems pretty low. Yeah, so 180, you know, or so, uh, what, 36 packs at a time. So it's just it's not just, enough to go around, man. Yeah, it's not. We're catching up, though. I mean, it's, that's a big part of why we expanded the distillery. Um, you know, we, we doubled literally everything. You know, stills. How many fermentation tanks do we We doubled that, too? The what? The fermentation tanks. How many do we yeah. add? Well, we will have, we'll have 50, twice as many. Right? Yeah. right now, we've added basically 33% more fermentation capacity um, just because we don't need to. We know that six years out, we're not going to double sales overnight, so we're stepping into it. So we've added eight know, more man. fermenters. The way things have been <laughs> yeah, going. Yeah, you never know. Yeah, but it's all in place, and we have the fermenters there. It's just a matter of putting them together. It's, they're wooden, and they don't sure. they don't do well just standing up empty. So we're going to put them up as we need them. Actually, when we start back up, we'll be running in September. We'll be running two more lots worth of fermenters, so sixteen more fermenters. Sixteen more. So uh, for a total so, capacity of what? That'll be about five point six million. Sorry, OPGs. No, not uh, uh, oh. sorry. I mean, uh, how many uh, fermenters total? Oh, that'll be. Um, 40. 40 fermenters. Wow. That's a lot of, a lot of, uh, yeah, it's a lot of, it's a lot of, yeast. A lot of corn. Yeah. Around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of corn. Uh, yeah. And so that, that's turned out, uh, it's been quite the undertaking. I think I, yeah. was it, it wasn't, I originally I had heard a $22 million expansion, but I think it's twice that. Oh yeah. I mean, the, uh, if you look at the distillery and the warehousing, because obviously we have to have more warehouse space to, sure. um, accommodate that extra, um, liquid. That's about $55 million. How many more Rick houses did you guys ha- add? Uh, we've added one, and we'll add two more in the next couple of years. And what sort and of capacity? Probably, and it's Warehouse X, by the way. Oh, yeah. wow. So Pretty cool, huh? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you guys aren't doing anything special with it. It's just a standard yeah, warehouse? Just, yeah, 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 everything we do is special. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, Chris, okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just meant like uh, there's no, some, yeah. some Warehouse I know, X is it, like experimental. It does sound exciting like we're going to yeah, yeah. go in and try something new. But. Yeah. Can I have the first <laughs> pick out of there? I'm about to say, you know, you know some of the nerdy guys are going to be like, oh, I just got to have one that has an X on it. That's oh, of course. Want, yeah, yeah. yeah. What's, the, uh, what's the capacity of your brick houses? I've got uh, over 20,000 barrels. Per, should be about twenty four thousand. We can't keep them all the way full. Sure, you have to have some empty space so you can for entry and withdrawal. Plus, if there's a collapse, it's not that far to go. <laughs> that was insensitive. That's uh, <laughs> <laughs> the uh, yeah. So I, I've always thought uh, I think capacity is usually like you know thirty thousand for a typical six floor. Or yeah, seven ours floor. aren't too far no, off. No, that's not too far yeah. off. No, I, I always imagined because it was one floor that it was much. Uh, smaller capacity, but that's that's yeah. still they're about an acre a piece. Yeah, they're so massive. They take up a lot of. Yeah, we may not go far up, but we go we real, go out real wide. We go yeah, out and over. Yeah, and then we got fire berms around each one, so just in case there ever you know ever a need. God forsake. Sure. Yeah. 
God, the, the year that we have a, sh- a real shortage of Four Roses is going to be riots everywhere. <laughs> um, all right, so let's. I want to try this OBSO 10-year, oh, yeah. 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 Like, I love Michael Canfield, but I honestly don't see why he doesn't enjoy. That's that's pretty good. I'm really happy with it. Nick? Ooh, boy, the smell, the sweetness on this. You good? You want another one? Oh, I'm good. Okay. It's, a, it's a caramel bomb. Now, I wish Ooh. there were a backstory for this actual sample, but it was just one that <laughs> just, was really good. Hey, I think saying that Brent Elliott, uh, Brent Elliott came over and brought me a hand porn sample, <laughs> I think that's a pretty good backstory. And Nick was there too, I guess. <laughs> Man, those, those older ones have such a... And by the way, old tin's not old. No. But no. the difference in um, oak influence is just... Night and day. What's the proof on this? That hits the sweet spot right too at the age. Yeah, right about one twenty. Yeah. I think that was a second tier, so it might be a little bit lower, maybe one fifteen. But you proofing. normally see a, a higher, um, higher proof, higher up you go. Yeah, correct. Uh-huh. I'm trying to provide as much information to those who. <laughs> May or may not know. Well, there's, yeah. you, you get these podcasts. So I, I, to me, it's just about sitting down and talking with interesting people. The, the tagline of the show is spirited conversations with interesting people. But I try, I, I'm trying to make a conscious effort to be more mindful of those who are still learning. And, uh, you know, you being here is a big deal. You know, it's, it's, um, it's going to be f- full of information people aren't, you know, okay. they're, they're wanting to learn. At least we hope. Yeah. We'll see how you go. And, and, and I'll let feel you like know that's after. what a lot of people who listen to podcasts do also. I mean, anything that I'm personally trying to learn more about, I mean, I'm sitting in the car so much, I just search for some of the better podcast or whatever pops up on iTunes. And then when you can't find anything, you'll watch mine. And, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, you so listen, where you're going with that. I listen to him on Fridays in the morning when I'm starting laundry. <laughs> you know what's, you know, I'm actually, and uh, I'm not, I hope this doesn't come off as braggardly, but our, our, our episodes upload at 3 a.m. and I get up at, I get up at 5.30 to get ready for work. I'll sometimes, as I'm getting ready, I'll just check to see the stats of the show. Zero. No, there's a, a ton of listeners at 6 o'clock in the morning. I say a ton, but a couple hundred first thing in the morning is like a pretty cool... Uh, yeah, that's when I generally listen is in the mornings when it's, I said It's I'm drive doing, time. Yeah. Yeah. I just get kind of excited to think that people wake up in the morning and think, I want to listen to this idiot talk, you know? This is good. This is fantastic, by yeah. the way. Now that's that's not a single barrel. It's a that was a single barrel. It is from a single barrel sample. It's just a ten year old OBSO. I think, like I said, second tier that I just grabbed from the lab. I started with this. I wanted to sample you on some distillate. Sure. And I love that particular both the O's in distillate. And so then I went a few shelves up to the OBSO matcher it. Found that one. Pulled it down. Sampled it. I was like, yeah, this is the one. I'll take this. There's a you know, and for those who don't know, for the last couple of years, we've been seeing younger single barrels come out. You guys are, you know, meeting up, trying to meet the demand while still keeping at least the eight-year mark. Uh, Actually, seven. 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 Yeah. For, uh-huh. for we're talking about private yeah, barrel. We, the second time we've done that. Today, yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. Private barrels eight. Yeah. Right. So there, for, there have been some seven private barrels that, that slipped out. Really? Heather. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I, I thought this, the minimum was eight, right? But I but. They're, they're but very close to eight. <laughs> the last couple of years, we're seeing younger and younger barrels released, and now I'm seeing the opposite. I'm seeing them starting to get a little yes. older. So you guys are catching up. A couple of years of, of, of stretching thin, but you guys are now like starting to release. I saw something that was like nine nine nine. I think I saw a nine eleven. I think everything. Never forget that has been sele- <laughs> that has been selected thus far coming to Houston is ten or higher. There may be a high nine. Mine that came out this year was nine. You picked, yeah, I did last, a, you picked last year. I picked, it, I picked in December. <laughs> That's last year. Oh, okay. No. But everything, so we, no, touche, I guess. everything we started picking this year, I've, I've noticed, has been, well, actually, I think Nathan's might be like nine, ten or something like that. But sure. almost everything is ten and up that I've seen. Do you have yeah. any feelings there, on... There's 12 years in that pick, too. Really? Yeah. Do you have any... F- now, for, I realize that Four Roses may have a difference in opinion over Brent Elliott, but curious either way. Uh-huh. Do, do you have an opinion on, on custom stickers? Do they bother you at all? Or do you, you, I mean, some of them can get a bit crazy, like the Gork Smash one we talked yeah, about earlier. No, I think as long <laughs> as they're tasteful, I think they're... Sure. 
There's been no some one, that have not been. They're, they're fun. Yeah. You see, you see the hype one this past weekend? Uh, the one that says place hype here. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah, pretty yeah. Awesome. So I thought, I thought that was really tasteful as well. Yeah. But also an insult. Like, yeah. like oh, no, it, was, yeah. it was really good. Yeah. 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 It was basically a, a perforated shade, yeah. a perforated outline saying place hype here, meaning put your sticker here if you want to hype up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Which is pretty, pretty well done. I, I, it was out of Austin, right? I don't know. I, I know Jared uh, Liddell or Lydell or. Oh, is he the one who posted? He's it? the one who posted it. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. This, this is a good bottle. Yeah, yeah. I did see it. Yeah, it made me laugh. <laughs> Man, yeah, that, that is a like flavor that. bomb. Yeah, and then the next one is the. Oh, that's. I'll explain that in a second. But on the uh, prep barrel program, uh, yep. they do fluctuate. They go up. They go down. I think there are a few reasons for that. Well, one is when you see the older ages, and I think you said all the ones coming here are like ten plus. Mm-hmm. I did a selection last week, and I think the majority of them were ten plus. But you know there are, there are times where it's more on the lines of eight or, but I think part of that is as an indication that the inventory is catching up some. But I think more importantly, I think Mandy in the last couple of years has gone into the habit of or the uh, process of turning the barrels around, so nobody knows the age. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. She's purposely yes. Yeah. So without that, you know, people not even consciously, if they see that a barrel's older, they're going to kind of they'll gravitate to it. Or if they know the recipe and they think they like a particular recipe, yeah. they gravitate to it. So inevitably, if the ages are out there, you know, I think people sometimes gravitate to that. So the older barrels were getting taken up first in the program, leaving because some Because they were ones. consciously chosen. Yeah. Yeah, and like, now that they're no like, longer consciously. Oh, I need to have a 12-year. You know, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. What's the then, oldest pick you've seen? Mm, we stop it at, uh, at 12 years, but there's some that sneak through. That sneak through or like Nick was saying, you select it now, but if it's going to be a few months before it gets bottled, it can be over out beyond under, that. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I, I know there, there's a 14, I think, that came out not too long ago in Colorado. I swear to God, I remember seeing a 17-year-old. Uh, the, those, oh, that was a those special are, case. Those are the special like distillery com- commemorative for the, like, sure. the opening. And, yeah, and those are it, your your it's a quick distillate way to spend a thousand and, bucks these days. Yeah. <laughs> Your distillate in particular has uh, an incredible range of flavor depending on age. Uh-huh. Just the difference between something that's nine year, twelve year, seventeen. Like the the difference is uh, pretty substantial. There's a uh-huh. lot of activity happening. Oh yeah. You know, in the barrel. And obviously. different recipes behave differently through time. I get asked all the time what my favorite recipe is, and first I can't answer that. But then if I start thinking want to get about close, it. I'd have to ask at what age because. Each one's different at different ages. Sure. I would have a different answer. Well, well, and you've been a, a, you were mentioning earlier, you're, you're a fan of the F, right? Uh, yeah. I'm I mean, in this, in, the, in this yeah. particular, you feel like the F shine. I really like the F. It's just a really defining yeast strain. It doesn't take much of it to leave its mark, to really influence the overall character of, of a recipe. And you can see it in this, you can see it in the 130th, um, Al's 50th. It doesn't take much F to really. Mm-hmm steer the make flavor. an impact uh-huh. yeah, and there's two different f in in this one out of the six yeah. different recipes total, both right? uh, both f's the high rye and the low rye match both the f yeast wow and you 59 you said 59.99 that's yeah. your upper upper range 59. upper range yeah, yeah i know you're seeing it quite a bit all over texas right now for like 55 54 mm-hmm uh, so okay. uh, two. Yeah. <laughs> it's like we wish we could tell people what to sell it for. But, sure, you know they're going to do what they want. <laughs> yeah. To do. Well, I, I know Rice was saying they went through eight cases in 20. the first week. So okay. So when I went in, it was like day two or day three. Oh yeah. Yeah. Day two or day three, they only had gone through eight cases. Yeah. But I guess twenty cases, which is the whole barrel's worth, by the way. Uh huh. And uh, a whole twenty cases. Oh, mm-hmm. it's not quite. I mean, it's more than our first barrel, seventy-two <laughs> bottles. But um. Yeah. No, it's a. It's a lot and. It's one of those things where, I mean, obviously, as you know, as like we've talked about, it's one of the biggest things in what we do for retail stores. It's, you know, we want displays. And so that's a, I was like, man, I was like, people are going to be craving this. They're going to buy it. We're going to stack it everywhere. I've been trying to like, just go find someone who has enough. Yeah, that can to, keep it on the shelf. To, to keep it displayed. Like, it's, it's insane. Like, we'll have someone who will set me up 5 to 10, and I'll come in later to check it out or throw signs on it, and it's at 3. And it's like, it's like, where, it's like where is this feeding frenzy coming from? Yeah, <laughs> see, that's the part of the whole, so, the, going back to the social media discussion we've been having about the impact of these Facebook groups is 
I think people only stay focused on I say people people within the industry who've only done it a certain way their entire life their focus has been on premise or this or that they don't pay attention to the the fanaticism or the fervor of people taking the day off from their day job because they saw a Facebook post and driving to one side to of Houston to, or more or more but right yeah. Omara takes days off all the time right the local guy Carson's okay. worse and and I don't think he actually works Carson Nunnally yeah yeah <laughs> he's an interesting fella um, <laughs> I like I like Carson. Uh, it just I, th- I think it's crazy how yes the, these groups are responsible for an overwhelming amount of one-offs, uh-huh. private barrels. But for a brand, your focus is your small batch or yellow label. And at this point, I'm sure single barrel is now a focus too because yeah. it's it's another one of those core lines that's just available you know uh, any time. But the fervor of of you guys launching this and then people literally they would not have known about this yeah through normal channels if it wasn't for facebook and it drives me nuts i pull out what's left of my hair trying to like uh, you who, you guys were southern yeah you guys were southern, southern. so i had a, a meeting with rndc last week the heads of all their divisions and none of them have social media accounts and i and i i was like social media is is imp- impacting the way that we do everything even if it's not, I'm not just saying one group, I'm just saying as a whole, all of Facebook is making this massive, it's, a, it's an advertising platform, right? I mean, I think, and I think I'm fair to say this, and you may disagree with me, but I think that Facebook is directly responsible for the overwhelming amount of the bourbon boom. Through secondary, through, and it, let me clarify, no, the last five years. I'm actually agreeing with you, um, and I'm piecing something together that I've always thought that makes total sense because I think, and we talked about this earlier, I think a lot of the popularity of bourbon or the, the explosion is because it's something that brings people together. And when I think about that, I think about like this, like, hey, sure. hey Nick, I got this great bottle. It's, it's more about the experience. Like, let's get together and, sure. and share this bourbon. It's about us, but the bourbon happens to be there that's bringing but you add social media into it. You see that I, I'm, we're it, friends. right in front of my face. I mean, I, I see it every day on, on social media. People get together. It's something to talk about, something that people are passionate about. So, I mean, we, we I met on saying. Facebook, right? Okay. We're, we're friends, but we, it started in a Facebook whiskey world, right? Yeah. And we've got together, had drinks. Uh, Nick's had bottle shares, with none of which I came to because we're not that close to friends. And uh, <laughs> it's, it's just amazing to me how this, you know, you gave me everything with your address. I, I think, yeah. you know, Mar- Marianne Barnes, or Marianne, sorry, Marianne Eves, she's been this face of Castle and Key, and I think a big part of her uh, r- rocket ship to, to, to notoriety started with Instagram and Facebook and the way that things have developed. And, of course, uh, you know, she announced her, uh, not retirement, but departure from Castle and Key today. And, and I think from what I was gathering, she's going to continue doing this being the face of, of brands, like, you know, doing like documentaries brand, and... Like a big brand ambassador. Yeah, like a, like uh, a major... Because she's done... She's been the like, face of every like, like bourbon documentary, every... <clears throat> I mean, she's the first female dis- master distiller in, in, in Kentucky history, right? Uh, like, that's correct, yeah. Is it? I'm 95% sure. I know they were looking into it. I don't know. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's some debate. But, in uh, modern times, for sure. I mean... But over the mm-hmm. past few years, it's been Instagram, Facebook, these groups. I mean, for, I think Four Roses went from being largely focused overseas to okay, let's come back to America. Hey, let's produce some some of you know some widely available. And then now it's like, you guys are Four Roses. You're not. A, yeah. You're still you're a mom and you're a small company, but still not a small company. Everyone asks us anytime they come in to pick. What, what are the chances? Can I pick three or four barrels? Can I do my own custom blend limited edition? Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, have you guys ever thought? Because OWA much, does that from you, time to time. How much do you get asked about something like Quite that? Quite a bit. Um, and it's like, one of I things, just blended this. It's so good. It's, it's like, not that it's not a great idea. Yeah. And I understand why people ask. It'd be fantastic. I wish we could offer that. But the logistics would just be. All right. So let me nightmare. solve that for you. Okay. Let me provide some insight. Listen, <laughs> I got a little experience in this realm. We were in. So. I feel I always feel like I'm tooting our horn, the Houston horn, but I'm I'm not Chris's horn, the Houston horn. We we do barrel picks all the time, and we treat okay. them like allocations. Okay. When it hits the warehouse, we line up the stores, 
and they take it all at once. Okay. I say, all right, this store on the north side, do you want some of this? Yes, okay. You take six cases, you take five cases, you take six cases. And they order it all at once. It comes in their regular deliveries that week. The okay. warehouse basically turned over a barrel and one go, took it all at once, and, uh, and, and it's evenly distributed throughout the city of Houston so that it, access to its members are okay. e- readily available. So we were up there last year, there to pick our barrel. Okay. We had a few stores call we, and said, hey, I don't want to fly up there, but we're, we're promised a barrel this year. Could you pick one for us? Okay. So we go up there. We end up picking for three stores okay. plus our barrel, so, so four stores. If you guys had blended that, which we didn't ask, yeah. but I'm just thinking, if you blended those barrels, it's already a nightmare for the, for the distributors to try to keep track of which barrel goes where. But okay. we, we don't tell them where it needs to go. We just, as soon as it hits their menu of available items, we have the store's order because they can see what's available in the system. Okay. See what I'm saying? Yeah. So if it, we did a small some ways batch, it's going to be easier. If we did a s- small yeah. batch blend, you're covering four stores. They're all getting the same exact product because it's a blend of all four barrels. Uh-huh. It's being split up all over the city of Houston. It's no more work or less work for the distributor because it's in the same pile in the warehouse. That's that's true. The problems with that two problems. One is for every good deed. <laughs> 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 so if we did it for you guys. Sure. Then every. the guy next week. And it wasn't such a perfect situation, sure. his, but he, you know, we couldn't sit down and explain that. Be like, ah, that's I'm not hearing that. You know, you it, did it for them. Why not us? It's sure. not a program. Yeah, like it's you, not that we would want to. Yeah, you have to do it for because OWA and, does it every once in a while, where they just randomly like, sure, why not? And they did a three bottle blend for Ed Bly. Yeah, and well, that's, oh, go ahead. Yeah. Sorry, that's one problem. The other is logistically, we couldn't do it. We have tanks for single barrel, and we mm-hmm. have big tanks. Oh, yeah. sure. There's nothing in between. So yeah. you couldn't blend them. We, we couldn't, couldn't batch them all. No. Yeah, yeah. No. Wow. Beam Be- said they could. So, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm they, sure, they I'm sure for four or five hundred dollars a bottle, it could be done <laughs> <laughs> to make up for all the downtime. <laughs> just thinking through it through my head. So, what do you got no, there? A, okay, this is something. You're um, so nosy. <laughs> yeah, that's that's why you brought it. I'm supposed to ask. That's for you. This is a batch. It's a 14 year old. When the samples pulled, it was a 14 year old OESV. This is a batch that I just think is really good. It is it's really light. It's a component. I was about to say, for 14 super years, light. Yeah. incredibly light. It's a first tier. Okay. First tier. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, whoa, whoa. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. One Here, okay. Let me just do this. First tier, 14 years old. Okay. And this is, this does have a backstory. This is one of the mingling components that went into oh, yeah. both Owls and the 130th. Mingling components. Mingling what components. What a nerd. Yeah. We don't use the we don't, we don't blend. Yeah. Oh, that's well, nice. I like brought this because I like it so notes. much. Even our website's called Mingle. <laughs> yeah. Hey, by the way, I got a bone to pick with you, <laughs> okay. uh, uh, Brent Elliott. Uh, mellow moments. What's up, man? What's Nick what's can't a, get you in? what's what's a guy got to do to get in mellow moments? Actually, I think I'm already registered. You're gonna want to cut this out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for sure, cut this out. Like for real. I got you. Because <laughs> you'll get like 40 people being like, "What's up?" Oh God! Last, Actually, last time someone made a post about me being able to get them. It was just a joke. Thanks yeah. for adding me into Mellow Moments. Oh, and within yeah. Within five minutes, if Facebook was just I was like, oh my goodness. This, like, can I, I'm going to blow some smoke Jesse up your Hernandez. butt for a minute. Yeah, uh, your, th- The glory of, of hiring you, the genius behind hiring uh, Nick here. N- Nick's been in the bourbon community active. You know, I, I talk about complaining about people who are in the industry but don't pay attention to social media, don't give it credit. Not this guy, right? So uh-huh. he's been in social media for a while, been super active in the bourbon community, finds his way into a job for a company that's also super loved by the community. You are our public enemy or public, <laughs> you know, fav- you're, you're like Will Smith in the I early 2000s. Both. Yeah, You can't do wrong. You're like The Rock right now. You can't, <laughs> everybody loves The Rock. Uh, you're in such a, a perfect spot uh, to be an ambassador for the brand. And that's just me showing you a little Thank love. Yeah. So I, I think, that. I think, there's no way you could, if you screw this job up, it's 100% your I mean, own fault. It's yeah, my fault. Because everything, <laughs> everything's working for you at this moment. Hey, as long as he keeps giving me good stuff to sell, I mean, that shouldn't, <laughs> that shouldn't be too difficult. Wow, that's really, uh, I hate to say this word, especially because it would have been a pun. It's very mellow. <laughs> it's, very, it's very mild, very soft. 
I don't like to say that's, smooth. That's another word we use. Smooth is smooth. an ugly word. No, we don't use that word. It's got kind of a. I got a dilly. But I was getting a little bit of a bubble gum note. I can see that too. But it's very. What's the proof on this? This one's probably it's under one ten. Sure. It's first here, it's. And I think we're hundred. Honestly, but. I think that's like where we shine in a lot of proofing, is from that like one hundred five to the one fifteen. Like of that's all the my, private selections I have, that's my favorite kind of I wheelhouse for most for our more consistent or more often than not. I like like the one hundred four to like one twelve. Yeah, there are exceptions, but. I That's actually really have a 90, I think I have a 98 or a 99, but the, it was a, I, I had a double take on it when I got it. I was like, I've never even seen one under 50 before, but yeah, that was pretty. There haven't been many of those that have gotten out. No, it was pretty cool. It's a little weird to go to the liquor store and buy a barrel strength. <laughs> it's it's lower the, strength than the yeah, standard. Than what it went in. Well, those are we're trying few, not to do that. But yeah, those are a few happens. that have sli slipped through, right? Yeah. Mandy was talking about that, that they'll taste something, they love it. And they find out it's like 98 proof and like, sorry, we can't sell it to you. Or that they're 10 bottles. Mm -hmm. People always want that well, anyway, though. Then they just ask for oh, a second dude, barrel. It's a, it's a number, first or, of all. to make a small batch with it. That's yeah. absolutely correct. <laughs> yeah, so what happens is uh, people love to say, I don't think it started off this way, but low fill barrels. It's like a selling, uh -huh. it's another green light, right? It's another yeah. selling point. It's a low fill. I've said it. It's the next product. That's the fifth rose. It, yeah. I've said it, and you don't even realize. Short rose. Yeah. <laughs> you don't even, rose bud. Yeah. <laughs> you, don't even, you don't even realize that it's, it, people kind of go fanatic over that. High proof, uh -huh. barrel strength, short fill barrel. It's because, it's I mean, just. Extra money on secondary. Just making, uh -huh. like, I think common person using their, their logic stream would be like, oh, it's kind of like. The less there is, but it's going up in concentrated proof. You know, they might be thinking about reducing something down on a stove. Like, oh, like I'm getting a higher more flavor, concentrating flavor. all that goodness. Yeah, yeah. more. I mean, that makes sense. So, right? I mean, would that not make sense? Volume. The the that's, whole idea that alcohol the ugliest barrels tend to be the best tasting barrels. Wade, uh, yeah, uh, Wade Woodard, the ugly barrel. Uh, what do you, what you call it? Word. The uh, ugly barrel paradox or something. Yeah, paradox. <laughs> Yeah, this is fantastic. You said OESV? O mm-hmm. And this was, when you say mingling components, how, how much, how many barrels went into the Al Young? Is that, is that public? Oh, yeah. Um, no limitation is my memory. I, I, 120 to 1... 120 barrels? Maybe between 120 and 140. I want to say 136, but I don't know if that's... That could have been the 130th. Yeah, it's roughly, if we do, at the ages these are, and they're always between 10 and... 18, 19 years old, more or less. 10,000. Yeah, I think so. it was around 10. Well, I'm trying to think of my bottle. If yeah, it's I'm, got, I'm thinking right now. This is 120 bottles times 120 barrels. Oh, about 15,000 bottles. Okay. I think That's it was. Actually, yeah. yeah. For the 130th. We, that was 15. Yeah, it was. We did 13 here and then two in Europe and then a few hundred cases in Japan. But as a rule of thumb, it's basically for every 10,000 bottles, or for every thousand, it's 10 barrels. Sure. It's roughly at that age you're getting about eighty to one hundred twenty bottles per barrel at at that age. You said something earlier that I think most people might hold on to. I kind of latched onto it. So you were talking about limited edition items, LTOs. Uh huh. So for Campari, it's thirty thousand, right? They they release a. Um, uh, master's keep or something it's 30,000 bottles okay I think you had mentioned that it's 12 to 15,000 as y'all's uh -huh. y'all's for y'all's goal less, yeah. yeah yeah for the small batch <clears throat> um, I, I just thought it was a fascinating tidbit because when you talk about what is limited what it means uh, and, and and I didn't know your number but I knew Campari's yeah so that's and Beam too I think that's Beam is 30,000 yeah yeah oh, this is fantastic so we like have uh, dinner tonight. You've got one. You've got a bottle signing mm -hmm. at Specs. Mm -hmm. At Specs, yeah. And then dinner at seven. It's not dinner. It's a party. Is it really? <laughs> oh, yeah, it's a party. 120 people. 125 people. Uh, Did you yeah, manage that about list? The RSVP. Yeah. And there are a lot of consumers. Yeah, big dinner, small it's, party. It's, however it's you a, want to look yeah, at. it's a fair amount of um, just on and off trade. Um, some distributorship partners going to be there um, and open up to consumers a little bit as well. Sure. Um, How many tenders. HBS members were invited? 10 or 15? That's it? Out of 6,000? Yeah. 
You heard it here first. It's a rowdy bunch, man. <laughs> Nick hates you. It's a rowdy bunch. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Is it a rowdy bunch, <laughs> they, Nicholas? They are. Uh, uh, but yeah, so it's, but it, yeah, it'll be a fun time. So yeah, Specs and Goody will be there. Yeah. So. I, it, when you say Specs, are the on-premise team. Okay. Well, we invited everybody. We'll just sure. see who shows up. Yeah, uh, people in this industry are historically bad at RSVP. Sure, that's my phone has been do a bunch of RSVPs that people I gave invites to three weeks ago. Well, I I, <laughs> I, I, I run into Sammy a lot. Uh, is it Dante's from Goody Goody, the buyer there? Oh, Sammy, Sam Ray. Sa I think that's his name. Yeah, yeah. Sam. Sam comes into all the. I see him everywhere. Oh yeah, Sam's everywhere. He's good. But, but Love I Sam. Yeah, I don't yeah. see some of the other ones. They're a little bit more elusive. Um, I'm excited. So when do you go back. You go to Wednesday. Austin. Next. Yeah, Austin tomorrow morning. Tomorrow for, morning? Yeah. Oh yeah. It's we're I'm sending them off the party when we get done downtown and then I'm loading everything into my car and then just driving, driving Austin. It on Austin. How's the fiance? She's good. Still she'll be there. Yeah, okay. <laughs> She's still around. We were talking about <laughs> the idea of family life earlier and just be doing this this industry is very you, you drink because you have to, right? Like or you're 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 out like it's yeah. this long day sometimes a lot of windshield time but i mean it's it's changed a lot too of like you know my time like i once in a blue moon like do i even drink it? I've, I've stopped buying bottles because sure. i don't drink at home as much as i used to when i was you know running a retail route it's because i'm out already or you know i'll go home and i need to go out to the bar so i just call an uber go out well, it becomes so, a, it becomes no, a bit of a chore a little bit. Home. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it becomes a bit of a chore. Like, oh, I don't want to drink anymore. It's like, <laughs> I've talked about this before, but I've I've got a friend who uh, was a big wed wedding DJ. Okay. Playing the same ten songs on repeat for every wedding, and you know, he in his car he listens to nothing. It's complete silence. No radio. No music. He just can't do it. You know, and in this industry, I see a lot of people who you, you drink for work that. In your downtime, you just want to sleep or be with the kids or, you know, just there's no, it kind of, it doesn't take the fun out of it for you, but it's a different dynamic. Oh, yeah. If I get invited out to stuff, it's like. Yeah, especially after three rushed days here and then uh, into Austin. Oh, I'm disappearing for a few days. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> and then, you've, I mean, it's just, it's been an onslaught. And you got Derby last weekend. Um, How was Derby, by the way? Did I wasn't go? there. I wasn't there. No, we but do a lot we, of things with the Derby Festival. Yeah, and that all ended on Wednesday. And beyond that, all I did, I watched it sure. on TV. But it's always big. I mean, the weather was terrible. Yeah, but yeah. although I heard the race know, it wasn't was a little too great either. <laughs> yeah, a little historic in, in some bad ways. But yeah. the horse did something you didn't know he was doing. <laughs> it happens. So, other well, than that, it was Derby. It was good. Yeah, I we we've talked about going up there and putting on the seersucker suit and doing a one time but yeah. it's not really my thing I, you know I'd rather sit on a couch and uh, watch a good movie with family and popcorn and that whole thing so well I, I appreciate you coming on today um, I know well, you've got other things to get to but it was well, a great seeing you Chris, I actually I, I met you several years back but I know you don't remember it's me good because, to be back. <laughs> because of how insensitive you are but um, <laughs> Nick thanks so much buddy always and Glad I'll see you guys tonight yeah, yeah. Right. see you tonight cheers thanks cheers, cheers.